Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Matthew Waddy's channel. Uh, today, we are returning to the My Favorite WWF LJN Manager Tournament. Uh, so this is episode three of the tournament. Uh, so, so far, we've gone through uh, four matches in each of the first two videos, 16 figures in total. And if I can recall correctly, I believe we had 39 or 40 managers in this tournament. Off the top of my head, I kind of uh, can't remember exactly. So... You know, we are closing in. I'm thinking probably five videos or so to knock out the first round. Not too shabby. And with each subsequent round, basically cutting that in half. So probably looking at about three videos if I stretch it, if I, uh, stretch it out uh, in round two. Probably get round three and four done in like one video each. So not anything, not a super long tournament at all. Uh, there was a recent, well, as of... Within the last day or two, there was a recommendation from uh, one of my commenters, from one of my viewers, uh, talking about a my least favorite LJN tournament. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. Um, I'm, I'm kind of floating ideas of how I want to present that tournament. I don't think I can necessarily go through and include every single figure that I have. So what I'll probably end up doing is like a break it down to an even number. So 64 figures or maybe 32 figures. Just kind of see how that how it works out. I, I highly doubt I could find 64 bad figures, you know. So uh, I think 32 might be stretching it, but at least it'll leave us an even number each time. Now, obviously, from the time that I, that I filmed this video compared to when I filmed the other two videos and, and when I actually post these videos... Because I am going to be filming other videos in between uh, this tournament. So, it's going to be a little bit out of order. So, you know, a day ago I heard that I got this recommendation. And I might post this particular video a month later. So, but uh, that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, so, oh, let's backtrack a little bit. Um, I didn't bring my list with me. That's fine. Uh, I wanted to kind of look at the first two videos and look at the winners, but that's cool. That's fine. We'll we'll uh, we'll include them in the next video. So uh, let's get started with the uh, the matchups for this video. All right. So going through my little trusty hat here. Uh, first one is Red Shirt Referee, and he will do battle against the Gray Bobby Heenan. Uh, next matchup is going to feature <laughs> this. This uh, I think I mentioned this in the first video that we were going to have a special entry uh, into this tournament. Not a wrestler, but hey, the man is infamous for tackling someone uh, during a during a, a live television on, uh, taping. A uh, special guest of this tournament, Donald Trump. Yes, Donald Trump is LJN. Yes, he will be included in the manager tournament. That is so awesome. <laughs> Man, if the Don wins this tournament, I'm going to go through the moon. That, that, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, he will square off against Gold Freddie Blassie. Now, that's a tough one right there. That is a good matchup. <laughs> uh, matchup three is going to see the white shirt referee as he does battle... Against Lord Alfred Hayes. The last matchup for this particular video is going to feature Shinjo. And he will square off against Vince McMahon. So, as you know, I got a bunch of Vince McMahons. So, this right here is actually going to be original uh, Vince McMahon. So, I will go ahead and pull these figures. And I will be back in a split second. All right, everybody, so the figures have been pulled, and we will begin with our very first matchup, which I said was Red Shirt Referee, and we were looking at the Gray Bobby Heenan, so, all right, this is our next matchup, so we will start with Bobby Heenan. As you guys know, this is uh, among the Bobby Heenan figures, at least until I got the most recent black uh, Bobby Heenan in, this was easily my most favorite Bobby Heenan action figure. Uh, this one actually comes from Robert Jackson, 
one of those guys I've talked about, one of my favorite customizers. The man does everything. Uh, LJN, Hasbro, Galoob, so fantastic figures. Some of my most, you know, favorite pieces come from him. And he did an absolutely amazing job with this Bobby Heenan. What do I always say when I talk about my, my customs? Why do I gravitate towards customs so much? Why do I buy so many customs? Simply because I enjoy the LJN line. You know, simple, right? And customs, they give you a, a fresh take on on the on figures. They're unique figures. You know, normally they're one of a kind. Yeah, there are plenty, you know, paint schemes that other people emulate. Or, you know, maybe the same artist is selling multiple figures. Like Rob could make this figure and then repaint this same figure 20 times over and resell them 20 different times. Got it. But generally, you like to think of them as one of a kind type of deal. Whereas if you look at the original blue shirt, Bobby Heenan, an absolutely incredible LJN figure, but it's mass produced, right? There's tens of thousands of those figures out uh, out in the world today. And I gravitate towards dark colors. I like black. I like gray, especially dark gray. But, you know, I do wear the occasional light gray, silver, you know, from time to time. And this is a great paint scheme. I don't, I don't remember this particular outfit, but that's fine. Even if this is, you know, one of, you know, Rob's, you know, just, hey, I, I think these colors would work well together. It works fine for me. I love the figure. Absolutely amazing. And like I said, Bobby Heenan, not even just among the managers, but among the actual LJNs, this would be a fantastic, playable wrestling action figure. So great fighting pose. Awesome look. That is Bobby Heenan to me. Bobby Heenan is easily one of my most hated guys of all time. And it, 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 he's, he's like Ric Flair, right? As a kid, you absolutely despise Ric Flair. As an adult, I, I really, I mean, I've grown to love Bobby Heenan as an adult, but where Ric Flair just still gets to me, uh, still, still irks me a whole lot. But I'm always very appreciative of his career, right? And, like, you hear interviews, and you hear Bobby Heenan talk, and, like, you know, how he was playing his character and everything. The man was brilliant. <laughs> you know, he is the brain after all. Uh, he was absolutely phenomenal in in commentary and, you know, how he brought these different, you know, teams together. Has one of the most important stables of all time. I love the Bobby Heenan figure and I love the custom. Absolutely fantastic job. One more time. Kind of do a little full 360. Bobby Heenan squares off against a red shirt referee. So, not the greatest paint job ever. Like, when you look at the back of this particular figure, you can see kind of like the white the white shirt that was once there. You can just kind of see lines a little bit. The front of the shirt looks incredible. Like, I, I could look at this and would never even know. But then once you get to the back, it, it really you can really see the difference. So... Uh, I always say that pink shirt referee was my favorite, you know, blue shirt and white shirt, original referee to the original LJN line. And the pink shirt ref referee comes as an exclusive from Ram Treasures. If you're just looking at, it, at this from the front, he bleeds in beautifully with the rest of them. You, you wouldn't even know this was a repaint. But as a figure tournament, you know, first and foremost, you got to look at the paint scheme and you got to look at the technique and skill. And just that, the way that this kind of, you see the lines up and down here, it's just, uh, it kind of kills it for me. When we, uh, when I decided to make a, my favorite manager tournament and I decided to include commentary, uh, commentary analysts, you know, special guests, uh, when I decided to include high-ranking executives, uh, when I decided to include referees, I thought that one of the referees, or any, or all of them for that matter, had a legitimate shot of going multiple rounds. Could any of them have possibly won the tournament? I think so. At, at least one was a legitimate chance to, to win, depending on who they were squaring off against. But so far, in the first few videos... I keep selecting the referee, and they keep going against a far superior character, far superior paint scheme. Just uh, 
all around better figure. I love the referee. I hate losing them time after time. But come on. Bobby Heenan, this right here could be a semi-finalist. Am I exaggerating? I, I don't think so. Uh, not for this particular figure. Uh, I, I do think that this one could, could go very far. So, uh, Bobby Heenan moves on round two. Next matchup. <laughs> one of my favorites. The Don. Donald Trump squares off against Lord Alfred Hayes. Uh, we will start with Donald Trump. <laughs> like I said, uh, special guest stars. Uh, it'd be nice to get like a like a city lopper. We've got you know what? I could have technically put Mr. T in this tournament, and I don't know if I if I was correct and the numbers are are uneven. I might pull the Mr. T from Ram Treasures, or even the Mr. T from uh, from the from uh, the Raider Nation, and put them in this tournament. But if it's uneven, I'll have two figures to replace it with, so it'll still be uneven, which means I'll have to choose one. And I kind of feel like it's unfair because the Mr. T figure really kind of bleeds in better with actual wrestlers than he does the managers, so. I kind of feel like Mr. T would be an almost guaranteed win. So, but uh, we'll we'll go with we'll start we'll just kind of, we'll kind of cross that bridge if or when we get to it. Uh, Donald Trump. It's funny. Uh, my wife and I we were just watching uh, Home Alone two, uh, probably right around Christmas time, and uh, it had been a long time since I actually sat down and watched either the first or second Home Alone movies. And we probably watched both those movies in one day or back-to-back -back days. My wife and I, we, we, we differ in, in our viewing. Me, if I watch a movie, it's really hard for me to go back and re-watch that movie. Uh, even if it's been a year since I last seen it or 20 years since I last seen it, there are just certain movies I just don't want to re-watch. But um, just kind of seeing Donald, a young Donald Trump in Home Alone 2... You know, Kevin approaches him and asks him where the front desk is. That's pretty awesome. I'm like, you know what? Donald Trump was the best actor in that movie. <laughs> now, but seriously, this is a fantastic head sculpt. Look at that. Harvey Snuts. I keep forgetting his name, but that's who I bought, who I've been buying all of these recent figures from. Harvey Snuts on Mercari. Uh, if you look it up, Hulk, dollar sign, 0125. And uh, I do have more figures coming in. I think I bought five more from them. So, no, no managers. So, we don't have to worry about, you know, about that lot. And with a lot of, you know, commentary, like your Lord Alfred Hayes and, you know, your executives, stuff like that, a lot of people are going to reutilize the Mean Gene Oakland figure. I don't know if, if Donald Trump is necessarily that small, but... You know, it's still a great serviceable figure nonetheless. Not a whole lot of changes. Just alternating the head out. Still looks great. And you know what? How many people get to say they got a Donald Trump as an LJ hand? <laughs> that is so amazing. Uh, he does square off against Lord Alfred Hayes. So, artist Kenny Lester. Whenever you get a figure from him, you'll see he'll initial the bottom KL. And uh, if you go into the Raider Nation website and, you, you know, you, you purchase them, that's always something I think you should be on the lookout for. Uh, Kenny had so many absolutely amazing figures that I bought from, uh, the, from Justin and the Raider Nation that I kind of felt like, you know what, I want the complete Kenny Lester collection. So every time Justin on the Raider Nation uploaded, you know, more figures, more custom LGNs, I wanted them. But uh, over the last several months, I've just been finding it harder and harder to pick them up. Uh, you know, they came out with, like, Demolition, or uh, they came out with, uh, who else was it? Uh, Demolition, oh, Powers of Pain, you know, Customs. I've got plenty of those. And, you know, they, they like to use, like, Jimmy Snuka, right? Or, or something like that. And I hate that, so, no. Uh, I, I wasn't interested in it for that reason. A lot of figures, a lot of customs I buy off of Mercari, I get them for like 20 bucks, $25. Because I get them for bundles, like they might have Donald Trump for like $70, and I'll bundle like five or six figures together, 
I may like I may pay like 130 bucks for like a bundle of six. So, and maybe the price is like 200 dollars or something, right? So, um, that's the one downside about Raider Nation. Uh, obviously, you are paying for for the work and the figures, so they are a little bit more expensive. Usually, you're getting these for around 80 to 100 dollars, and I like the figure a lot. Um, I really love the fact that they alternated the arm and put the microphone, you know, out so that you're actually like right in the person's face interviewing them, which is amazing. I never understood the whole Mean Gene thing where the microphone is out to the side. So, do I value this at an eighty dollar plus figure? Mm, it's a it's a great figure. Um, is it one of my elite figures? It's not. Is it one of my favorites? No. Um, it's still one I'm glad to have. I mean, Lord Alfred Hayes, that's fine. I mean, when you go back and watch like all these old videos and you know, Lord Alfred Hayes is always on there. I, I know I listened to him as a kid. I just don't have the best recollection. So like if you were to ask me prior to going back and watching those videos, who's Lord Alfred Hayes? I'm gonna look at you like you're crazy. I'm gonna have absolutely no idea. It wasn't until I actually gone back and watched those shows I'm like, oh yeah, you know, light bulb. <laughs> I don't think the Don deserves, and yes, to me he will always be the Don, <laughs> deserves to move forward because he's really not that important to wrestling history where when it comes to WF lore, yeah, Alfred Hayes is all over the place. I'm going to shock some people though. And I am going to choose Donald Trump to move forward. <laughs> uh, I just love the face of the Don on here. He just looks so amazing. Lord Alfred Hayes, great figure. I specifically wanted this figure because I knew I was going to make this tournament. And this was a great pickup. I actually wanted to show this figure off the first time uh, when I made this tournament video. And uh, I ended up doing a shout out video for Raider Nation and showed uh, had shown off the other four figures I picked up, but that's okay. You guys knew this was coming. Lord Alfred Hayes, however, is eliminated here in round one. All right, so referee Heenan, Donald Trump. You know what? I did that backwards. These papers, I keep leaning on the papers and I'm messing them up. Donald Trump was not supposed to face Lord Alfred Hayes. He was supposed to face Freddie Blassie Gold. Well, since the match has already been done, I'm going to swap it. <laughs> so that means... Where did I do with that figure? Uh, da, 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 da. Did I take it off the shelf? No, I didn't. All right, guys. I'm going to pause again. Ugh. All right, guys. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, next matchup is going to feature White Shirt Referee as he squares off against Gold Freddy Blassie. Or, excuse me, Johnny Valiant. Ugh. Why am I all over the place? You know what? I've been looking for a gold Freddy Blassie, but I don't, but I think I messed them up. I think I meant to say Johnny Valiant when I wrote this out. Because I don't actually have a gold Freddy Blassie. Yeah. So I would have messed it. This whole video is all messed up already. <laughs> Alright, so scratch that. There's no Freddy Blassie. Uh, this is the guy I, I was talking about. Uh, John John Valiant. So Johnny Valiant Gold versus White Shirt Referee. I'm going to have to correct that. All right, so we will go with the Valiant one. Luscious Johnny Valiant. I don't know anything about Johnny Valiant. I don't remember him from childhood. Anything I've seen later on in life as an adult, rewatching other videos, Coliseum videos, or YouTube, what have you, I have absolutely no recollection whenever I see him as a manager, so to the best of my knowledge, I've the only time I've ever heard of Johnny Valiant is when I started collecting LJNs uh, back in the tail end of 2021. 
I really like his original LJN figure. And uh, I think I have... Is this the only custom? You know what? This might be the only custom I have of Johnny Valiant. I thought I had another one, but I can't remember any other, so... Paint scheme-wise, the black and gold looks so much better than what you got from the Series 5 release of an LJN. But, you know, still, uh, even though these colors may pop a whole lot more, I think that is just a little bit more appropriate, possibly, to what he may have worn around ringside. Again, I'm, I was either way too young or wasn't watching wrestling at the time that, you know, he was, you know, he was active, so... Series 5 was a 1988 release. 1988, I was three years old. So it, understand why I didn't, don't know a lot about Johnny Valiant. Uh, what I like about this figure, this one does come from Harvey as well. And he's been throwing in a few of these WWF LJN stands. Now, I don't think they can work for every single figure. But, you know, like I threw Iron Sheik in one of these. I threw uh, Hulk Hogan in one of these. I think if the legs are situated just enough, when you look at these stands, I've got a couple blue ones he sent me. I got a couple black ones. So you got the WWF logo, which is amazing. And again, you got to spread the feet. But when you slide them in, it's it feels like they're actually being locked in place. And that is so absolutely amazing. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love the David Garland four left ready creation uh, stands, but these, the fact that there is no, no, no rod going over their feet. So, you know, when the figure is bending forward and back, you're not damaging the rubber of, you know, of, around their toes. The fact that these just lock right into place and, you know, you could hold it by this. You can see it doesn't go anywhere and they're more affordable. So I, you know, I look at me uh, advertising for uh, Harvey. <laughs> now, nah, but he, he he threw in a few uh, because I bought so much for him from him. He threw a, a few of these stands in for me, and I thought that was so amazing. And I, I definitely wanted to talk about these because I think they're absolutely fantastic. Johnny Valiant, great looking pose. Is it a playable figure? The way that the hands are situated, it kind of reminds me a little bit about Jake Roberts. Jake Roberts is definitely playable, but not the best. And we're going back to the referee. Among the, the referees in this tournament, I would think that the white shirt was probably my least favorite. More importantly, because the white shirt is just so simple and plain. I don't like wearing white clothes. They very easily get dirty. And, you know, white t-shirts is different. That's... I probably wear nothing but white t-shirts, right? Um, but, like... Work shirts, dress shirts, and stuff. Nah, uh, I'm not a big fan of just plain white, you know, shirts. I've always said that referee would make a fantastic playable wrestling action figure, and you could use the referee as a gimmick. You don't have to use him as an actual, you know, referee or you know, wrist, lift him up and do counting every single time. So, it, I've, I've compared him to Terry Funk. If you love Terry Funk, LJN. You would love the referee because it's basically the same figure. You know, Terry Funk, you know, his left arm is back and up and whatnot, but nope, I lied. He, Terry Funk's right arm is up. Yeah, because it goes over to his right side. Yeah. So, yeah, basically exact same figure. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one. I, I think I'm going to choose the referee. Not only because he's probably the last referee in this tournament. No, that's not the reason. Uh, as from a playability standpoint, the referee is just a superior figure. I love this color scheme. I think among the figures I picked up from uh, Harvey that this is one of my favorites. You know, probably top five or whatnot. But I don't see Johnny Valiant winning this tournament. So I, I think it's relatively easy to push forward a referee, which a fi which is a figure I absolutely love. So for me, absolutely no brainer. All right, so uh, red shirt referee lost to the gray Bobby Heenan. Uh, Lord Alfred Hayes lost to Donald Trump. And I called him Freddy. Johnny Valiant Gold lost to white referee. And the last matchup we're going to be looking at is going to be original Vince McMahon 
as he squares off against manager Shinjo. So we will start with manager Shinjo, who is basically, he's just a Mr. Fuji repaint. Very simple. Among the figures I bought from uh, the Raider Nation, I think this one is probably going to be my, my least favorite figure. If not my least favorite, maybe in the top two or top three of my least favorites. Well, why did I pick him up? Again, I kind of put Classify the Rare Nation in the same boat that I had Random Treasures. Even if I didn't like a figure, I you know, I wanted to keep the collection going. Now, they're just random, you know, regular guys. They don't have well, at least Kenny doesn't. He doesn't have his own store. I think that's why, you know, he gives it to Justin to, to sell in his shop. Uh, it's just an overall just plain white figure throughout. So there's no no change. There's no eye-popping color scheme or anything like that. And it looks great. I mean, I'm a huge fan of the Mr. Fuji action figure. Another playable figure, which is enjoyable. I don't know a whole lot about Shinjo, uh, manager of, Hoku of uh, Hokushi. I know that much. Now, Hokushi, I remember him because, you know, the whole body tattoo, you know, that's kind of hard to forget. I don't care how much memory loss you have. Uh, Hokushi, Hokushi. I know he was one of the, I think he was uh, from Orient Express, if I'm not mistaken. Was it Sato? Like, I, I used to know, but, like, I, I can't remember because, you know, when you're learning about new things... Older knowledge you had kind of just disappears. So, you know, something new comes in, something old goes out. <laughs> but I, I think he he used to be Sato, if I'm not mistaken. Great figure overall. Paint scheme is very simple. I mean, it's clean. I mean, there's no, like, loss of paint or no smudges or anything like that. So, Kenny did a phenomenal job with this figure. Um, just because of who it's molded after and overall color it, it kind of detracts from the quality Vince McMahon I give a lot of you know a little a lot of flack to the Ron Simmons galoob because of the left arm being fused to his chest but I never really complain about Vince McMahon LJN in fact I always talk about the Vince McMahon LJN being an absolutely amazing piece Color scheme is fantastic. There are a lot of customs out there which are absolutely amazing. One of my highest ratings. I love the figure. But how can I love this figure and hate on Ron Simmons? The fact that Ron Simmons is a 4-inch figure, you know, obviously you get more detail with the 8-inch figure, so that helps. Ron Simmons is not just only a fused arm. He's got a stupid arm that's over his head like this, so he's nothing more than a than an elbow drop guy, right? Even though he, Vince McMahon has that stupid pointer finger up, which I hate, all these figures that have come with the pointers bothers me. But this is still, like, if you want to use this as 1999 Vince McMahon, Royal Rumble champion Vince McMahon, he he's, he could be a playable figure. He might be a one-handed a one fighter, but, you know, you can do a one-arm toss over, you could go underneath for a body slam, you could... Pretend throw your punches. So, it's a serviceable figure for that purpose. And you know, like wrestlers, when I come in, like, arm close, I kind of tilt over and punch the guy in the face as I fall down on him. That pose works for that purpose. Kind of same thing I used to do with Ron Simmons when, uh, when I used to play with him as a kid. And like I said, overall color scheme and design, you know, is absolutely phenomenal. Does Vince McMahon win this tournament? Well, I can at least say that Vince McMahon is going to defeat Shinjo. Uh, this, to me, was an absolute no-brainer. Does he win the tournament? I think I can see this Vince McMahon in the Final Four. I do have other Vince McMahon customs. Could either of those overthrow the original? I think so. But it's all about how it plays out. One of those customs could face someone else who could then be eliminated by someone I feel is worse than this figure. So, 
there is possibilities for uh, an original Vince McMahon to cross that threshold into the final four, maybe even the final two. We'll see what happens. I, I think by the end of round two, I will definitely have a better idea of where I'm going with this tournament or what I think might happen. I've been wrong before, but I'm curious to find out. <laughs> All right, so that does cl uh, close out episode three of this tournament. I am going to stay down here. I'm going to film another video. And uh, I think every time I come down to film a tournament video, I'll probably film two videos. And uh, right now, the goal is every Friday to post these videos. So every Monday was going to be like real chat, military talk. Uh, every Friday is going to be a new tournament video. So, And I think once this tournament's over, that might allow me to dive into other tournaments. Keep going every Friday. Uh, that's it for now, guys. Uh, as always, you know, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you guys have any ideas of where you think I should go, Please let me know. Uh, you've seen my collection. You pretty much know exactly what I have available. So, <laughs> and with any of these matches, if you think I've made the wrong choice, please you know let me know your feelings. Uh, always curious to hear what you guys think as well. All right, guys, that's all for now. Uh, talk to you later. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>